One amongst them, probably most known, being that of Star Wars. I see that all the Star Wars fans are present. They're all here. That's good. <laughs> Many other things though. It will be a quiet and relaxing moment in such a hectic environment that is the Brussels Comic Convention. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure they'll have a warm applause for none other than puppeteering, acting, legend, creator, genius, well, yeah, all over fun guy, Mike Quinn! <laughs> there. Check, check, check. Ah, oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. What a marvelous, marvelous introduction. And how lovely Thanks, it Ryan. is to be here. Everyone's so nice. Why are you all so nice here? Uh, well, um, we have we have secret plans. We're oh, trying good. to lull people into senses of security. Uh, I know secret plans. And then suddenly, raw. You know, that's what happened to the Death Star, so... <laughs> I don't know. Have a seat. Thank you. It's a bit heavy for me to take home on the plane. Yes, but uh, no, it's already been claimed, uh, actually. Okay. Emily de Ravin said she wanted to take it home. She, yes. Because it's so... I can imagine. I can just see, like... Yes. Oh, Let's do this. How lovely. It's one of our more comfortable moments. How, how I, lovely. No, I have to go the other way. A cup of tea and, you know, <laughs> some cakes. What is it with British people and tea what and cakes? You know, that's the thing. I like coffee. I don't drink tea. So, okay. but then I'm a bit, I'm a bit messed up. Georgia Hurst was here before, and she said tea was definite. Tea and cookies was absolutely important to her. Okay, yes, yes, not for me. No, coffee. Coffee, black coffee, yeah, yeah. But you've seen the world, haven't you? I saw it on TV, yeah. <laughs> it was quite big Excellent. at the time. Uh, well, I told you already, uh, je ferai des tra traductions en français, mais, uh, oh, I'll keep it, keep it short. Oh. Il aime bien le café, plutôt que le thé. Well, that's, I think that's the most important thing so far. Uh, so far, yeah, we, we're, we're only scratching the surface. <laughs> oh my goodness, how deep do you want to go? How deep? Yeah? Um, you're a puppeteer. Yes, yes. What, what is puppeteering? It, puppeteering is basically bringing an inanimate object to life so that it's thinking and you believe that it's real, just like animation. Only in, it's like animation, but in real time, you know, so you're... Your hand can be thinking and creepy, and I have no control over it right now. No? No, it's just... <laughs> it's just doing its own thing. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are. Behave yourself. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I... Yes, that's puppetry. That's puppetry. <laughs> Donc de donner la vie à des choses euh, qui ne vivent pas et de leur donner une un âme, une personnalité, euh, un sens d'existence, a sense of existence. It's, yeah, definitely a life life force. You've you've been in so many productions over the years, mainly like fantasies and science fiction based. True. true. Is, is that something that you wanted to do as a child? Interesting. Or did it kind of roll over you and said, okay. No, it's definitely something I, I, I sought out. When I was very young, though, I was very much into animation and cartoons and would do a lot of drawing. And had Muppet Show not come along, I might have gone down that road. But as soon as I saw Muppet Show in the 1970s in England, I, I obsessed, I was a young teenager, and I just obsessed about how are these, what's happening here? How are they working these things? How are they built? Um, and so I was set about finding out. There wasn't much information back then, but um, I, I uh, met Jim Henson and his puppeteers. I was about, what, 14, I think? And, uh, wow. and then when I was 15, I was able to get myself into the studios where they were shooting Muppet Show. I literally bribed my way in uh, and had days off school. So they got to know me. So I kind of made it my business to, to, uh, to, to be around them and learn everything I could. And eventually when I left school, um, I think Jim Henson apparently said at one point, well, he's here all the time anyway, we might as well give him a job. So that's sort of, yeah. It's the mall of the fantasy and the science fiction. Yeah, the French part. Sorry. That's okay. Um, 
il, ça lui a toujours intéressé. Euh, en fait, il a commencé à, faire, à, faire, à travailler un peu dans, dans l'animation, euh, les dessins, les dessinés, mais quand il était jeune, il a vu euh, The Muppet Show et ça lui a changé tout à fait la vie et ses intentions, ses ambitions. Et il a dit, mais qu'est-ce qui, qu qui se passe sur ma télévision Moi, j'aimerais bien faire des choses pareilles aussi. Et donc, quand il avait 14 ans, il a réussi à être sur, dans le, dans, sur le set euh, où travaillait aussi euh, Jim Henson avec le Muppet Show. Euh, de temps en temps, il n'allait pas à l'école pour y être. Et après un certain temps, Jim Henson s'est dit, bah, il est ici tout le temps en tout cas. Euh, pourquoi ne pas lui donner une fonction Et donc, c'est comme ça qu'il a commencé à, à travailler euh, avec des poupées. They're all here. Yes. <laughs> well done, by the way, remembering all that. Um, you've worked on one of the most fearsome movies of my childhood, which is Ooh. The Dark Crystal. Yes, the original. I, 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 my, my uncle was a projectionist wow. in the cinema, we, and he knew it was a Jim Henson movie, so he said, oh, this, you're seven years old, why don't you go and watch this movie? Are you sure he wasn't just projecting his fears onto you? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> He was showing that, and it scared me to bits, and it took me years. I was 16 before I managed to actually watch the movie. It's scary. You know, people say that. I'm not sure when we were making it, we were thinking of it in those terms. And I'm not even sure that Jim Henson intended it to be super scary or anything. I think we all just thought we were making this fantasy film with these weird creatures. You know, some were evil and some were good, but we never thought of it as being as terrorizing children, but I guess it, it did quite a bit. Um, I think what's nice, I mean, it wasn't a, a financial success at the time, um, but creatively it was unique. It was the first animatronic film ever. Uh, so we, we had to invent a lot of that thing, that stuff for the first time ever. So, so it was a, an interesting challenge, but um, I think Jim Henson made Labyrinth as an answer to Dark Crystal four years later, but it's a totally different film with music and humans, you know, so I think he tried to address what people struggled with in the original movie. But with that said, it did inspire a lot of people to get into into our work and, and uh, paintings and filmmaking. Um, and it's nice that it's still remembered all this time later. I think, I think Jim Henson would have been very pleased to hear that. Euh, donc j'ai raconté que quand j'ai vu en tant qu'enfant The Dark Crystal, je ne connais pas le, mot, le titre en français, est-ce que vous savez ce Dark Crystal Dark Crystal Ouais, ok. Le cristal obscur. Non, le Dark Crystal. Ça m'a fait énormément peur, ça m'a terrorisé en tant qu'enfant. Et euh, Mike explique que ce n'était pas du tout ce qu'il voulait faire, même Jim Henson. Personne n'y pensait comme un film horrifiant. Euh, euh, mais tout était nouveau. C'était avec des technologies qui n'existaient pas. continue talking, maybe we yes. can get we'll, we'll them continue. over. We're okay. You can carry on, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Et donc, euh, beaucoup de gens se sentaient quand même, à cause du film qui, qui n'a pas bien vendu à ce temps-là, se sentaient inspirés à faire de l'art, à de faire des films eux-mêmes. Et euh, que Jim Henson serait très fier euh, de voir comment les gens aiment le film après toutes ces années, où dans, quand, au moment des sorties, personne n'y est allé pour le voir dans le cinéma. Ah, oui, plus ou moins. Yeah, I'm sorry about uh, the, the... No, it's great. I love it. It's just like when I'm asleep at night. It's fantastic. This is like what's inside my head. <laughs> we prepared this. Yes, yes. It makes me feel at home. <laughs> so, I'm, Star Wars. I'm standing up to make you feel uncomfortable okay. now. Yeah, are you? I'm so small. <laughs> it's okay. I'm smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. Okay. Yes, I've heard of that. It's You've quite... heard of it? I yes. hear it's, it's fun. It's all right. There's some plot holes. It's not but... for everybody, but there's some black holes too. Yes. Hey. hey! Thank you. Ba -dum, ba -dum, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Jim Hansen, you work with him. Yeah. And then, well, another legendary person, George Lucas. Yeah, absolutely. Can, is, was it the transition from one to the other, or it did was, you have to do a separate weaseling in? No, it was actually very natural because Jim and, and um, George were friends anyway. You know, they knew each other, and of course, with Yoda from Empire Strikes Back, they had that connection. So when Dark Crystal finished, the very next film in the studio was Return of the Jedi at Boron Wood. So literally, they just took on a bunch of us puppeteers who'd just been trained to work creatures to work on Jedi. So I didn't even have to audition, really. I just had a, an interview with Robert Watts, the producer, in his office for like 10 minutes. And then a few months later, I was on the film just doing... I didn't know what I was going to be doing. So... Donc, euh, après Dark Crystal, c'était le même endroit où on a filmé euh, Return of the Jedi et euh, la production euh, de Star Wars. Déjà, George Lucas et Jim Henson, c'était des bons amis. Ils ont simplement demandé tous les gens qui pouvaient opérer les, les, les poupées et faire les animations. Euh, il a eu une interview de 10 minutes et ils ont dit « Oui, bon, c'est bon, tu peux euh, travailler chez nous. » Et donc, c'est vraiment une transition de l'un vers l'autre. By the time of Return of the Jedi, Star Wars was a big thing, though. Already. Absolutely. You knew, you knew what you were getting into. I sure did. I was a huge fan of Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. And the first two movies, you know, I was a good age. I think I was, what, 13 when Star Wars, as it was called, came out <laughs> back then for the old school people. Um, so I was a big fan. So, so walking on set uh, in the first week of shooting, Uh, and seeing seeing this, this this show unfold, the script unfold in front of me, seeing seeing how I'm come out of this carbonite, you know, it, it was amazing, and and uh, you know, Leia coming in in her uh, out, you know, a boss boss outfit, boss. Yeah, boss. Yes, outfit. I say yes because I don't know all the names of the characters, but yes, it was exciting. Yeah. Uh, donc il savait bien sûr quand il a commencé sur euh, Return of the Jedi, déjà Star Wars c'était un, 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 grand, un, un, un grand phénomène, la guerre des étoiles en français, la guerre des That's étoiles, right. Star Wars for short. Euh, yes. <laughs> il avait 13 ans quand le premier Star Wars est, est sorti et c'était était complètement son chose, donc il était tout à fait étonné et heureux quand, quand il a pu travailler sur, sur euh, le retour du Jedi et, et de voir ces scènes se présenter devant lui, de voir Han Solo qui sortait du carbonite, euh, euh, Leia qui se présente de son costume Bosque. Yeah. Bosque, we've decided yeah. it's Bosque. Bosque, whatever it was. But anyway, they, they, they and then, then Luke coming in with his black uh, cloak and outfit, yes. you know, and speaking to Jabba, it's like, wow, this is, I'm watching the story unfold in real life, in real time. How crazy is that? Uh, oui, voilà, donc, donc uh, de voir Luke Skywalker, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, there is perhaps some people who might have questions. I have to check this. Yes. Are they? Yeah. Belgians are very kind, but they're also timid sometimes. Timid. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Um, so kindly but... invite them. Is it? Would you have a question? Yeah. Oh, there's there's Thomas. That's oh, uh, good. Well, well done. Thomas. <laughs> Oh, wait, one, one moment. The, oh, does he have to fade you up? Yeah, there's no sound now here. On the yellow one, please. The yellow phone. Check, check, check. Ah, okay. There. Um, Welcome. Hello. Um, seems like uh, your work requires a lot of patience. Have you always been like that, or did you have to learn to be a patient person? Oh, uh, patience. Um, It can be a slow process, for sure, on a film set. Um, you know, where you're lucky, some, like, especially with the fantasy films, you might only get 30 seconds a day or something. But no, for me, I never got bored, and I never do, because there's always so much to, to learn and what, watch what's going on. Or, you know, you're making new friends on set, you become like a family as well, when you're, you, when you're in the trenches together, you know, months and months of all trying to support each other. But I'd, I'd you know, be curious about why they, what's happening with lighting, why are they doing it this way, and how does this work? And so I've, I can't say I've ever really got bored on a set. Um, I've got cold, and I've got hungry, and I've got tired, and I've got hot. But I, I, yeah, patience, uh, I also, I'm a puppet maker as well. Um, so I think that requires a, where you're just sitting on your own at a table for weeks on end making puppets. That requires, I guess, a, a different kind of patience in a way because it's a much slower process. Um, 
but to me, being on a on a set is invigorating and energizing, and it's just so exciting because it, that's where the cake is baked. You know, that's where you're making the magic. It all finally comes together, and what you do. You, when, the, when everybody's focused on you, the camera's on you, it's your close-up, and it's the very end of the day, and you think, I'm, sometimes I only get one take on something, because that's all there's time for, and you think, wow, what I'm about to do is going to be on film forever, for, you know, people are going to look at this thing hundreds of years from now, and then what I'm going to do is what it's going to be, that's it. It's a lot of pressure. Donc, si, si on a besoin de beaucoup de patience, si on est sur set, euh, en train de faire, un, de tourner un film, euh, il ne s'est jamais, en, jamais ennuyé, parce qu'il y a toujours quelque chose qui se passe. Ils sont en train de, de corriger les lumières, euh, des acteurs, d'autres acteurs qui se préparent. Donc, il y a toujours quelque chose à découvrir. Et puis, euh, il, il ne euh, pilote pas seulement des, 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 des poupées, euh, mais il les construit aussi lui-même. Et ça prend parfois des semaines et des semaines à les construire ses caractères, donc il a, il a cette patience en lui déjà, et, euh, et si au bout de la journée, c'est son tour de, de faire sa scène, son, son moment, son shot, il y a beaucoup de pression, mais il s'est dit, ces 5, 6, 10, 8 secondes qu'on me filme seront permanents pour tout le temps qui vient, et tout le monde pourra le voir, donc c'est bien important de faire que ça soit excellent et c'est la cause qu'il y a très peu d'ennuyance, ennuyance, qu'on s'ennuie pas sur scène, ennuyance, I'm inventing new words, <laughs> French people love if you're transforming words into new ones, <laughs> brilliant, they're totally flexible, well not French yeah. people, they're Belgian people, yeah. but they speak French, right? <laughs> Super. No? <laughs> Super. Super. Well, not all of them. Some speak Dutch. Yes. How is your Dutch? Yes. I did a commercial in Dutch many years ago, um, and there was a talking washing machine, and so we had to, I had to mime to a pre-recorded track and sort of learn it parrot fashion. But um, uh, and I was inside this washing machine. It was on a big pole arm, uh, and the, 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 there was where the mouth was so I was inside being rocked around and I thought I was gonna get I got bad so bad such bad motion sickness in there I thought I'm you know just don't put it put me on the spin cycle because I'll be done for so you do some weird things <laughs> Euh, une, une fois, il a, on, on, parce que je parlais des langues en néerlandais, Paul Hollande, il a fait une publicité avec une, une machine à laver euh, qui devrait être animée, qui bougeait, il se retrouvait dedans et ça bougeait beaucoup, donc il est devenu un peu euh, malade, comme on devient à la mer, qu'on qu bouge un peu trop. Mais tout s'est passé très bien. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Oh man, it oh, goes man. too quickly. Too, too. We haven't even done our song together that we rehearsed. The song. Have we? We go oh, next time. I'm so I sorry. I wanna be in love, but I thought it was me and my shadow. Oh, okay, no. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that next we'll do time. Me and my shadow. Okay. Me and my shadow. Yeah, it's a great number. <laughs> you know, forget Frank Sinatra. This is the one. Or you can buy the uh, when we when we get the EP out. And yes. You can buy that. The right? final. Yeah, yeah. It's a limited edition anyway. Exactly. It has one. colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can do a medley of my hit. Yes. A medley of my hit. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Uh, and of course, I have to be really, really corny and say. May the force be with you all. But thank you. And uh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. Oh, that's very really nice. Thank you very much. If people want to find you, you'll be there. Oh, and they'll be there too. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're, our single is going to be a hit. I know already. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Quinn.